Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another instant deck tech. As you probably know by now, this week is Eldritch Moon Week here on Instant Deck Tech Land, so we are focusing exclusively on decks that are playing new cards from Magic's newest, sweetest set, Eldritch Moon. Today, we are looking at a deck playing a card I really didn't expect to see show up in standard. This is Ulrich of the Carlin Horde. In a deck I'm calling Werewolves and Dragons, this one took Kevin Breyer to a top 64 finish at this weekend's SCG Open, so congrats to Kevin on his finish with the deck. A quick reminder before we break it down, if you enjoy this deck and want to see it made into videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck, because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So this deck, as its name suggests, is playing a lot of werewolves and dragons. Actually, it's kind of a green-red mid-range good stuff deck. It just so happens that a lot of the cards it's playing are either werewolves or dragons. So you got Uvenwald Captive as the mana dork, Tapsiata Green as a two-drop, fine. In the late game, if you have seven mana, you can transform it around into a 4-6. Pretty reasonable. Duskwatch, you probably know what that one does. Helps you cycle through your deck to find more creatures. One of the better two-drops in the format. Ulrich of the Carlin Horde wasn't really expecting to see him show up in standard, but it's kind of a pump spell when it enters the battlefield or when it transforms, so you can get in a little bit of damage, and then you also can fight a non-werewolf when it flips over into a 6-6. Six -six. So, I don't know if this is better than just playing other 5-drops, more uh, evasive dragon-y fly drops, but it's cool to see it in action. And then a couple of Arlen Cords, the Werewolf Planeswalker, Moving on from the werewolves, we have some dragons. Thunderbreak Regent, just an efficient 4-drop. In the worst case, it's going to deal some damage to your opponent when they kill it. Dragon Lord of Tarka can wrath away your board. And then Mirrorwing Dragon is basically, in this deck, a 4-5 flyer that protects itself. If your opponent uh, murders it or casts a removal spell on it, that spell is going to get copied to hit all of the creatures on their side of the battlefield. So it's kind of difficult to interact with with spells. The deck does not have anything uh, that they are doing to combo off with it. You're not targeting your own mirror wing dragon. Uh, that would be a very bad idea in this deck. Uh, the rest of the deck, just some on-curve stuff. Sylvan Advocate, maybe the best card in standard. Definitely the best 2-drop. Some Nissas for value. Sturge out of land, flips around to, into a Planeswalker in the late game, and Dem Protector to get some stuff back from the graveyard. And then there's the meld combo. You got four Handwear Garrisons as three drops, sort of the mini Hero of Blade Hold for red, uh, makes a couple tokens when it attacks, and of course, you get a single Handwear Battleman. So the deck isn't really focused on melding the Handwear Garrison into Handwear the Writhing Township, but it could happen and come up every once in a while, but both cards are played because they are standalone good in this deck. You can haste in your Dragonlord Atarkas, uh, your Ulrichs, and so forth. Uh, plus, Hanwar Garrison can just take over a game if your opponent doesn't have a blocker. And then there's some removal to help get your creatures through, also to finish off your opponent. Three Collective Defiance, kind of a Searing Blaze. Most often, it's going to be four mana. You do four to a creature and three to your opponent. Not bad. Incendiary Flow, uh, basically a Volcanic Hammer. Sorcery Speed, 3 damage to a creature or player. And then Draconic Roar, you do have a decent amount of dragons, so you can turn it into a Searing Blaze at some points. Otherwise, it just kills a creature and gets it out of the way. In the mana base, a bunch of duels and some mountains and forests. And then in the sideboard, we have the removal package. Rending Volley, Clip Wings, good against Spirits. Clip Wings, very good against Avacins and now Emrakuls. And then more Dachronic Roars and some Roast to deal with ground creatures. And then we have more of the control deck package. Evolutionary Leap gives you a ton of value. Uh, fizzling your opponent's removal spells, turning those into new creatures. Death Mist Raptor synergizes with Evolutionary Leap, also with your Den Protectors, just a hard to deal with recurring threat. And then a couple of Chandras to come in and close down a game, generate a ton of value in more controlling matchups where you can win with the Elementals, improve your hand quality, or wrath away the board if need be. So that is Werewolves and Dragons in Standard. It looks pretty sweet. It's got a lot of really cool and interesting cards in it. So I'm excited to see it having some amount of success on the first week of Eldritch Moon Standard. Anyway, that's been our Instant Deck Tech for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon.